In a previous video, I showed you the masking plateau plot in theta and how you can interpret the plot for undermasking, effective masking, and overmasking. Today, I want to show you an example of the masking tool, which is just another way to visualize and understand concepts related to masking. There's a bunch of other videos that cover interaural attenuation, cross hearing, and the occlusion effect, so I hope you've already taken a chance to look at those videos before this one. Check out this case I made in theta. On the right side of the screen, you see unmasked thresholds for air conduction and bone conduction in the right and left ears. On the left side, you have the masking tool. The masking tool shows you the level of the signal and the level of the masker in the test and the non-test ear. Every time we present a signal to a listener, we're not just presenting it to the ear that we think we are. The sound from the signal in the test ear is also heard in the non-test ear but the sound loses some energy as it crosses from the test to the non-test ear. We're gonna go over that a little bit here and it'll make more sense. Let's look at the bone conduction threshold at 1000 Hz for the right ear. When we placed the bone oscillator on the right mastoid to get bone conduction testing, we found our threshold at 10 dBHL. For bone conduction, there's an interaural attenuation of zero dB, meaning when we put the bone oscillator on the right side, we don't really know if it's the right ear or the left ear that's responding. If you look over at the masking tool, you can see that in the test ear, or the right side, we played a 10 dB sound. That 10 dB sound is nowhere near the true threshold for bone conduction for the right ear, or the test ear. But if you'll notice, that, that bone conduction sound also stimulated the left ear, or the non-test ear, at a 10 dB HL level, which is where the threshold is on that side. So this is why the patient responded. They didn't respond because we're at the threshold in the right ear. They responded because the left ear, or the non-test ear cochlea, was sensitive enough to respond at that level. We notice that there's a significant air bone gap in the right ear. We decide we need to mask, so we turn on the masking in the non-test ear. We put the transducer on that non-test ear, which covers it up. This creates an occlusion effect. If you haven't already, you should check out the occlusion effect video that we've already made to explain why the sound would get louder when you cover up one side. In this case, at 1000 Hz, a 10 dB bone conduction sound in an occluded ear gets a 10 dB occlusion effect boost that we need to account for. So we're gonna raise our masker level by 10 dB to make sure that we cover up that occlusion effect, and then we're gonna add our 10 dB safety pad. This ensures that we have enough masking in the non-test ear to completely cover up the crossed over bone conduction signal, factoring in the occlusion effect. At this point, we'll present our stimulus and we won't get a response. And this makes sense. Look at the masking tool. Our stimulus is below the threshold in the test ear and it's above the threshold in the non-test ear, but we've put enough masking in to make sure that we're covering up that signal. At this point, we would raise our signal. No response, so we raise our signal. So we got a response. Let's take a look at what's going on here in greater detail. The signal is presented at 20 dB into the test ear. We're below the threshold in that ear, so we're not, but the patient responded, so we're not getting a response from the test ear. So let's check out what's going on in the non-test ear. The 20 dBHL signal crosses over and doesn't lose any energy because it's transmitted by bone conduction. But the non-test ear is now plugged up with the masking transducer. So there's an occlusion effect that boosts this signal and makes it a little bit louder. So in the non-test ear by bone conduction, we have a 20 dB SL stimulus. The signal by bone conduction is 20 dB louder than the threshold of bone conduction in the non-test ear. Let's take a look at the air conduction. The air conduction threshold is 15 dB and the level of the masker is 35, which gives us also a 20 dB SL signal. At this point, we have a 20 dB SL masker covering up a 20 dB SL signal for a signal to noise ratio of zero dB. So at this point, the noise, at this point, the signal is just barely audible in the non-test ear. When we get a, when we get a response from the non-test ear, we raise our masker. When we raise the masker, the masking tool shows us that we have a 25 dB SNR of masker and a 20 dB SNR for our signal in the non-test ear. And so we would expect the patient to not respond. So we'll present and we don't get a response. So we raise the signal. We raise the masker and the signal 
until we get to the true threshold in that year. So at this point, there's two things going on. The signal is being played at 35 dBHL. So it's being heard in the test ear at threshold. It's also being heard by the non-test ear at a signal to noise ratio of 35 dB. We're trying to cover up that 35 dB of signal by adding 35 dB of noise into the non-test ear. So at this point, we're not really sure, we're, at this point, we're not really confident which ear is hearing the sound or not. It could be that we're hearing it from the threshold in the test ear, but it could still be that we're hearing it in the covered up ear in the non-test ear. To make sure that we're taking the non-test ear out of the game, if we get a response, we raise the masker and we present this tone again. We still got a response. At this point, we have enough masking to cover up the signal in the non-test ear, but we're still getting a response. So this is a good indicator that we're at the true threshold in the test ear. So we would raise the masker and we could raise the masker again. At this point, we're really sure we have so much masking in our non-test ear that we're confident that we're covering up the signal in that ear. There's more masking than there is signal. At the same time, the signal is being heard in the test ear, but you'll notice that the masking level is also creeping up, getting close to threshold in the test ear. If we keep increasing the masker, we reach a point where the patient stops responding. When the patient stops responding, that indicates that our masking level is so high that the masker has actually crossed over into the test ear and covered up the threshold in the test ear. When this happens, it can be tempting to raise the signal level so that you get a patient response again, but doing so only brings the signal back up to the level of the masker. So then when you raise the masker again, you're just covering up the signal. And then you play this cat and mouse game of signal and masker until you hit the limits of the audiometer. This is called overmasking. When the level of the masker is so loud that it crosses over to the test ear at a sensation level that's significant enough to prevent you from hearing the tone in the test ear. Let's do another threshold. At 3000 Hertz, we add our 10 dB safety pad for the masker and we present and get no response. So we raise our signal and we raise our signal again until we get a response. So why did the patient respond here? Is it because they heard it in the test ear or because they heard it in the non-test ear? Let's turn on the masking tool and you can see that they didn't respond because we're at threshold in the test ear. They heard it because it crossed over and so we would raise the masker. But raising the masker only increases it 5 dB to cover up this signal. So it's no wonder that they don't respond but that when we raise the signal the patient will respond the next time. When they respond, you raise the masker and the stimulus until you reach a point where you get a response even after you raise the masker. So what's happening here? If you get a response after you've raised the masker, it's because they're hearing it at the true threshold in the test ear. You can confirm this by continuing to raise the masker and the patient will continue to respond. At some point, you can raise the masker so much that you're overmasking, or in other words, the masker, the masker is presented at such a high level that it crosses over to the test ear and covers up the threshold of that test ear and raises it. If you present so much masking that you're overmasking, you've gone too far. The goal of the plateau method is to find the point where you're at the true threshold and effectively covering up the non-test ear, but that you're not presenting so much masking that you're overmasking. This is effective masking. I know it can be confusing to think of masking in a new way, but I really hope that the masking tool helps you see this a different way. If you want more videos with the masking tool, just shout out and let us know. Good luck and have fun using Theta.